This tutorial is going to walk you through using AirDroid on any Android phone to transfer files wirelessly to and from any other computer. The first thing you have to be absolutely sure of is that your phone and the computer are both connected to the same router. Your phone can be connected by Wi-Fi, your computer can be connected by an Ethernet cable to the router or by Wi-Fi, it doesn't matter. What matters is that both devices are connected to the same router. If you're using your mobile data plan, this won't work. You have to be connected to the same router as the computer. What you're looking at right now is the screen of my Samsung Galaxy S6. In order to use AirDroid, you need to go to the Google Play Store and install it. All you have to do is search AirDroid, one word. There is absolutely nothing fancy about the install. Just go ahead and install it. I'm not going to walk you through that because it really is that easy. You just find the app and install it. Once you've downloaded the app and installed it, you need to launch it. So you launch AirDroid. And to the right of this blue circle, you'll see the AirDroid web. You can either use HTTP colon forward slash forward slash web.airdroid.com or HTTP colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.1.67 colon eight 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 eight. Now that number is going to be different for all of you. That is the IP address that the router is giving to my phone. While you can use web.airdroid.com, sometimes that just doesn't work. It, it can't find it. It doesn't recognize the name. So I just prefer to use the direct IP address. Once you see that address, and again, it will be different for all of you, you need to go over to the computer that you want to connect to the phone with and put that address into any internet browser. I'm gonna do that right now to just finish up showing you the phone part, and then we'll hop over to the computer and I'll show you that part. So I'm just gonna make the connection now. And once I do, the phone is telling me that the IP address 192.168.1.64 wants to connect to the phone. I can either reject it or accept it. That is the IP address of my Mac, and it will be different for all of you. Obviously, I'm gonna accept it, so I accept it. Now, at this point, I don't need to do anything else on my phone. I've connected the computer. From this point out, I can control everything, transferring files to and from the device, all from my computer. So now we're gonna hop over to the computer, and I will show you that part. Once you have AirDroid up and running on your Android phone and you're sure that your Android phone and your computer are both connected to the same router, again, that's very important or it won't work, you then open up whatever browser you want. I prefer Google Chrome because everything Android is Google. You put in that same address, http colon forward slash forward slash 192.168 dot one dot six seven colon eight 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 and hit enter when you do that you'll see the message please accept the connection on your device so on your android phone you want to hit the accept button once you do that you're now connected to your phone on the left hand side are a whole bunch of different options and then on the right hand side you have some basic information about the phone. It tells me I've used 18.21 gig out of 54 gig. I'm going to close this ad. Um, so if I want to see the messages on my phone, I would click the messages. If I want to see the contacts, I would click the contacts. doesn't matter what I want to see. So I'm just going to use photos for an example. You click on it. It has all the different folders that I've basically have on my Android phone with the camera folder being the default. So I live in Mexico City at the moment. So I just took three 
quick pictures just so I'd have something here. So you can go to an individual file and just click download. That will then download that picture to your downloads directory. I can click it. I'm done. I can also come in here and do a select all. So if I took a whole bunch of photos and I want to download them all, I would just click, click this select all button and then I would hit download. It will automatically put them in a zip file called camera.zip. And if I click on it, it'll extract it within my downloads folder. And there are the three images. One, two, and three. Now, if I want, I can also come here and delete. Um, the reason I like to delete this way is because if I go into my camera app, anything, videos, anything I've grabbed will all get deleted if I select all on my Android phone. So I like to be able to come in here and see what I'm actually deleting. And if I select all with my particular model, the Samsung Galaxy S6, it won't actually delete any videos I've recorded. So it allows me to differentiate in the delete process between photos and videos. If I delete on my Android phone, it will just delete everything. And so I've gotten in the habit of using this for my delete. I click the delete button. Are you sure you want to delete the selected photos? I say, okay, they're gone permanently. Now, on the left here, you can see options such as music, all of these pop up new little mini windows. And if you close any of them, you can just come back over here and open another one right back up. For transferring files up to the phone, if you come and you're in this music folder, it won't let you upload files that it doesn't consider music. And the same thing would happen if you came to videos it would say you need to upload only a video file. So what I like to do is actually use the files folder. And from here, I can create any folder I want with this new folder button, or I can just use um, my documents. I created one a while back, my stuff. When you come into these folders, um, I can upload any file type I want. It doesn't matter. I can go out to um, Finder on the Mac, which would be Windows Explorer on Windows, and drag and drop the files here. Or I can click Upload File and select the file that I want to upload. So if I come here, I can just say I want to upload, um, I teach English, so I want to upload the 500 um, most common words in the English language. I click open. Over here on the right, it gave a little status, but because it's such a small file, it uploaded immediately. Then from my Android phone, I can now see that file in that folder if I just use the file manager or any file manager utility. Um, if I want to delete the file, again, I can just delete it. And so that is basically it. I'm not going to walk you through how to use all of these options. There's a help menu right here. I just created this so that you will be able to connect to your Android phone rather quickly. And then um, you could feel free to explore if you don't hit the delete button and you don't load upload any super gigantic files, you're not going to really hurt anything if you try uploading and downloading. It's possible if you uploaded something when you didn't have enough space, you could cause a problem for yourself. But again, over here on the right, it tells me how much I have free. And I've only used 18 gig out of 54 so I could pretty much upload anything I want. Hopefully with this information, you won't have any trouble connecting to your Android phone using AirDroid.